volatility has been very, very low. We've been supported by a good economy and very low interest rates, lots of liquidity. And 2017 was a record low yield, uh, year in terms of the uh, volatility we saw in the marketplace. So it's not an enormously uh, bearish call to say that volatility is going to increase. It's just going to move back to something more normal. And on the return side, looking ahead with a long run perspective, we are acknowledging a stronger economy, but we also have to acknowledge that a lot of it is priced in already because multiples are at a premium, not a discount. So we have to haircut our forward looking long run perspective to account for those higher valuations. So those two statements, more volatility and lower returns going forward from where we are, are really not controversial calls. It's just taking an account of the facts as we see them. So it's not as bearish as it might appear or as that I uh, inferred from them. Sandy, your, your rejoinder. Well, I would say that on the, on the flip side, the U.S. consumer really drives the bus in the economy. <clears throat> and the U.S. consumer is seeing basically the best employment picture they've seen in almost several decades. On top of that, their interest expense versus their overall income is near a 10-year low. So the consumer balance sheet is good. Housing starts are well below average at near one million. And then the banking system, basically the large cap banks, are probably the strongest they've been in a generation. So coupled with a lower corporate tax rate and small and medium business confidence index, basically the highest level since 1983, we think that in general growth is likely to accelerate in the U.S. economy. And with the stock market trading around 16 times forward earnings, I think it's a very reasonable level to expect further gains ahead. Sandy, what are we waiting for in terms of the financials? I see you like them, but we've been waiting. You could have made this argument for financials the entire year, and so far year to date, they're up about a percent as a group. So is it the spreads between twos and tens? I mean, what are you waiting for? Well, I tell you, the, the, the banks basically, when you look at the fundamentals with regards to loan growth, uh, net interest margin expansion, uh, their return on tangible common equity, Basically, the overall fundamental picture looks very healthy. The stocks have basically been trapped within this uh, negative sentiment vortex around trade wars, um, around really just kind of that, that uh, concerns around China. But the fundamentals actually are quite healthy at the banks, and they're trading near, based on our estimates, less than 70 cents on the dollar. So I think companies like Citigroup, Bank of America look very attractive right here. On top of that, you're getting nice, healthy capital returns. So they're buying in a ton of shares. They've been passing the Federal Reserve stress test for eight years in a row, and now they're increasing dividends. In fact, the U.S. banks are now the new dividend growth names. 